Well, hello, folks at home. I'm here in the Wakarusa River Valley with Larry Miller, who's my friend that I met through KHS, the Kansas Herpetological Society. And um, I have long admired your, um, your, your scientific knowledge. And I know I had read one of your um, Facebook posts about the importance of, of um, documentation and accurate facts. And um, so I've, I've long admired your participation in the scientific community with the Herpetological Society. And um, I don't know if everybody knows that you and your students are the reason that we have a state reptile, the um, ornate box turtle. And that was what, spring? 19, uh, 1986, 85, 86 school year. Yeah, with, because you taught um, well, that time middle was, school. Right, that time I was teaching just uh, fifth and sixth grade sciences in Caldwell, Kansas. We were told that we needed to put together something for the 125th uh, anniversary for the Kansas statehood in 1986, and my students decided they wanted to go for a new state symbol. Uh, we discussed several state fish. We discussed uh, state well, basically state fish and state reptile because they had been talked about before. Um, it came down to the bull snake or the ornate box oh, turtle. Oh, hey, I didn't know that. Uh, the bull snake probably had almost as much support in the classroom <laughs> as the box turtle because we kept one. Um, however, some of the parents had mentioned to their children that a lot of people didn't like snakes and you might have a better chance with a box turtle. <laughs> to and getting it pushed through. To get through. it through. And, 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 of course, that was at a time before that a lot of DNA work was being done, and now there's no question whether box turtles are a completely different class of their own anyway. But... That's a long story anyway. That's neat. That's, that's, uh, that's how it started. Oh, awesome. Uh, and, then, um, and then, I don't know if you want to talk about things maybe you've done with KABT or KHS as well, okay. because your your work within the scientific community, I think, is so well, the, the impressive. Kansas Herb Society um, was formed in 1990, 1974, uh, basically uh, an idea of several herpetologists in Lawrence, so Joe Collins being the main one. And uh, I was teaching in Caldwell at that time. I just started teaching in 1971 and 72. I'll be honest, at that time I did not know, bug trying to get me there, uh, <laughs> I did not know how to identify a lot of the amphibian reptiles in Kansas. Uh, my background was in natural sciences. I had lots of courses in science, but I would not majored in biology or herpetology. And, uh, Kids were bringing all these snakes, and I was getting some. I could identify a lot, and I could tell if they were venomous or not, but that was about it. And in 19, uh, it was 74 when the first edition of Amphibians and Reptiles in Kansas came out that Joe was the author oh, okay. of. And someone mentioned I should get that book. I did, um, and it was very helpful, but I still couldn't identify everything, so I, and I didn't have an idea who Joe Collins was at the time. He, he, went, by, he went by Tom Collins at that time. Oh, okay. And uh, so uh, what happened was uh, I took photos of several of them, the snakes I wasn't sure of, and I sent them to uh, Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks, which was the Kansas Fish and Game Commission at that time. One of the people there sent them back to me and sent me a letter saying that I needed to send them to Tom Collins at the University of Kansas because he was the expert. Oh, that's awesome. Gave me his address. So oh, I sent sweet. them to Joe, or Tom then. and. Uh, Joe identified them, wrote me, and said that there was a new society being formed, the Kansas Herpetological Society, and said, gosh, he said, we should, could use some members from that part of the state. He said, would you be interested? So I joined. That's great. Um, first field trip was in Kingman County the following uh, spring, 1975. Uh, Joe and I hit it off, and uh, between 1975 and when he passed in 2012, uh, we had traveled basically, we'd pretty much been to every county in Kansas, or he'd been to all of them. I'd been to most of them with him. We'd been to Arizona. Uh, we did a lot of work in Florida. Um, and uh, we just had some great times. Yeah, um, being great friends. And yes, and having my students who got involved, and this is something I think that every teacher finds out is if you are teaching something or doing something that you enjoy as much as you want them to enjoy it, they're going to enjoy it. And Joe was excellent about giving credit. Uh, if you look at his book on amphibians and reptiles in Kansas, the latest one being amphibians, reptiles, and turtles in Kansas, uh, and look at the, re the uh, credits, he has page after page of credits. Oh, that's awesome. 
uh, there is at minimum a hundred of those people that were students of mine in Caldwell, Kansas at the time. Oh, that's great. Not counting the number that were students from around Topeka after I moved to Topeka. And I bet they were so excited yeah, to, see, to see be your name and, 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 and print. So uh, wow. if they did something of any kind of scientific significance or even attended a field trip, uh, Joe gave them credit. That's nice. So um, that, that was something I learned and learned about documentation as well, that you don't guess at things with any of them. So um, I just started taking the elementary education courses, which I thought I wanted to teach elementary school or middle school, really, or junior high at that time. And my professor was uh, a gentleman by the name of Ed Foster, um, who uh, just passed away about a year ago. Um, he uh, was by far the best instructor I ever had in college or probably anywhere. Uh, he knew how to work with students, he loved students, he loved the people he worked with, whether they were going to be a, you know, a teacher in New York City mm -hmm. or stay here in Kansas, and he did a variety of things. Um, actually, one of the things that got me interested to begin with in his classes, uh, Max, I wish you wouldn't do that, <laughs> best friend. And, uh, was um, he taught aerospace education courses, and uh, I got to go to Florida with him oh, in wow. uh, January before our moon landing that following oh, uh, deal and go through all of the things at, at the Cape. Uh, but he also loved wildlife. He loved nature. And being an elementary ed, I was one of a very few people. I, I shouldn't say few people. I was one of the very few males in the class. Most were female. Right, right. And, um, which was an advantage back then because uh, schools were looking for men and uh, there weren't a lot in elementary ed. But I remember one day in class, I was my junior year, and he walks in and pulls out a, uh, a prairie king snake out of a bag. <laughs> and he said, how many of you in here have ever, or how many of you are afraid of snakes? There were really not all that many hands went up, but there were quite a few. And then uh, he said, well, how many of you really understand snakes and can identify snakes? Hardly any of us. I, I sure didn't put my hand up because a lot I knew I couldn't. And he said, well, how many of you think you'll be teaching in Kansas? And about half of us put our hands <laughs> up. And he says, I'll make a prediction, he said. Uh, I predict that within the first week of school, one of your students will bring in a snake, walk up <laughs> to so you true. and say, what is it? <laughs> and how you respond will determine what your school year will be like. And then he started talking about snakes, and we all end up handling this king snake and everything. That's awesome! My first week of school in Caldwell, and it's probably been uh, maybe the third or fourth day, uh, this young man, I was teaching sixth grade, fifth and sixth grade, the sixth grader walks in in the morning, and I could tell something was strange right before school, so I got a big coffee can, and he's smiling, and all the other students are around him, and he walks up, and I said, well, what can I do for you? Because it's actually before school is starting, he says, Mr. Miller, what is this? He opened the can and pulled out a fairly large prairie king snake. Oh my gosh. One of the few I could still identify. Thank goodness. And I looked and I said, oh, that's a prairie king snake. Can I hold it? And uh, Was he trying to make you nervous I think that when I, he brought I, it I really in to be a little I think that was stinker. probably it. He, did not, he thought it was a bull snake. He actually didn't know for sure what he had, <laughs> but he knew it wasn't dangerous. Awesome. Um, and I really believe that made a lot, uh, had a lot to do with that first teaching. Yeah. Of course, after that, everybody was bringing them in. Oh, right. Uh, well, I have an award to present you. So this is um, the President's Award from the Kansas Association of Biology Teachers, and it's given by at discretion by the by the president. So because I so admire you and your, and you, I think you said it perfectly when you said that if the teacher's excited, the students will be excited, and and so just how you've um, inspired me as a teacher and um, connection with nature and your just giving nature and. It's just, I really enjoy you. So um, this is uh, given to Larry Miller in honor of the President's Award for a lifetime of service to teaching science and community. So that is for you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, There's so many outstanding teachers out there. <laughs> and I, in fact, I could name a few that were former students that I'm... Which is amazing which, how which the impact you've had. Is, is something that whether it was me or some other teacher, I don't know, but they, they're doing a wonderful job as well. I really appreciate it. Of course. And thank you so much. And what you don't, what, what I didn't say was this is, um, the tradition is to have the GPS coordinates of where this wood oh, was collected. Uh -huh. And so I have been on a mission because I've known I wanted to give this to you for the last year. So I've been on a mission to 
find a chunk of wood from this area. Oh, wow. Um, thanks to the, the Fab Lab and Keith Manbeck, who's a teacher at my school, well, who, who created that for fantastic. us. Fantastic. Thank you so of much. Of course.